at Luke chapter 2. We're looking at the first and last Adams. After Adam was created in Genesis 2 7, the Lord God formed the dust of the earth and uh, made and, and made Adam, made Adam out of the dust of the earth, and then he breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. And after that, God brought in a married couple, Adam and Eve, in the first part of the first Adam. The last Adam, he is the glory of God. God would not have him without his two to be brought in upon his first appearance in the world. And in Luke chapter 2, you have his first shedding of blood. In Luke 2, 21. And then in Luke 2, 49, you have his first recorded words that he ever said in the Bible. It's a glorious time. God walking around among men. In the first Adam, he had those two to be married, to bring in physical seed. In the last Adam, he did not have these two to be married to one another, nor does the Bible say that Simeon was married himself. We know Anna wasn't. But we certainly know that Simeon was not married to Anna. So it goes from a physical couple married together to bring in the physical seed. And in that Adam all die. And then you have this spiritual couple that's married to God. I speak concerning Christ and the church. The great mystery Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 32. So I'm not talking about men and women getting married. I'm talking about Christ and his church. So God would start off the last Adam. <clears throat> in Christ shall all be made alive. Without the physical union of marriage. But with the spiritual union of both of them being in the same Holy Spirit. Directed towards God and not towards each other. And that is what will bring in the spiritual seed is each individual seeing the Son and believing on Him and having life. So we're beginning to look at this and see the things that God has for us. In the first Adam, He lost His covering. <clears throat> The Bible said in Genesis 2.25 that Adam and his wife were naked, but they were not ashamed. I have to think about sheep. God said that you're the people, of, you're the sheep of my pasture. It's not we that have made ourselves. He that has made us and not we are ourselves. He, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture and the sheep being covered with this white snowy wool I can only imagine that Adam and Eve were covered <coughs> with the outgoing glory of God the illuminous light of life the Bible said they were both naked but they wasn't naked like what you think it means they were not clothed with cloth and fabrications that man has made they were without natural covering food with clothing and so forth robes or gowns or whatever but the reason they were not ashamed is because none of their flesh showed when it says they were naked it means as far as man is concerned they didn't go down to the clothing store and pick out items of clothing to cover themselves with. They had no covering that is artificial, that is made of man. In that way they were naked. But they were without shame because they were covered with the outgoing presence of the glory of God. In the next chapter, chapter 3 of Genesis, 
Very sad commentary. As soon as they ate, as soon as disobedience came, they were ashamed. They did see the shame of their nakedness. Now they've got to go find some kind of artificial covering because they lost their covering. They chose the fig leaf and try to piece it together and it being without the strength to hold itself together they hid themselves as well and God asked Adam when Adam said we were afraid and we hid ourselves because we were naked God asked him a question how did you find out you were naked I didn't know I was naked until God clothed me with righteousness. I'm talking about spiritual nakedness before God Almighty. The man in the tombs, they couldn't keep any clothes on him. But when the disciples returned, there's one word that's included in the condition of that man. He was in his right mind. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus and he was clothed. In Genesis, they were clothed with the outgoing glory of God. Where did this man get his covering? If you have two cloaks, you see somebody in need of one, take it off and give it to him. He was wearing one of the garments that had clothed the Son of Man. And I'd like to have been there, you say, and have Jesus fit me with his garment. That must have been something special. Soldiers thought it was something special. They wouldn't tear it up. It had no seams. They were gambling for it to keep it together, prophesied by God. But their soul, you sing it, don't you believe it? Clothed in His righteousness alone, faultless to stand before His throne. You're clothed in your right mind and I hope and pray to God as your pastor right now you're not sitting on that bench in front of me you're sitting in the presence of Jehovah God sitting at the feet of Jesus and saying sirs we would see Jesus Adam lost his covering but Simeon spoke about his covering in 2.26 <clears throat> and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he, was, before he had seen the Lord's Christ and he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law he took him up in his arms and said and blessed God and said Lord now let us Thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians in the fifth chapter, and he said, Not that I desire to be unclothed. He said, I don't have a death wish. It's not that I desire to lay this flesh off and be unclothed with my flesh, but it's just as I, des I desire to be clothed upon with the glorified presence of God in eternity. So, Adam and Eve were literally, physically unclothed, lost their covering. But Simeon gained his by waiting to see the Lord. And he said, Lord, let now thy servant depart according to thy word let me depart in peace 
And he wasn't worried about death because here was the person of the life. If the Holy Ghost presents Christ to you, he presents Christ to you authentically. It's not another Jesus or another gospel, Paul said. And it's not another preacher. The preachers of Satan transform themselves. But this is the Holy Ghost preaching to us this Jesus. And we are clothed upon with a righteousness that's not our own. We are clothed upon with a righteousness that he, the Lamb, who could only afford pigeons for his sacrifice, gave us the royal blood of the Holy Son of God and clothed us in his righteousness alone. Faultless glory to God Almighty to stand before the throne of God. Ain't you glad? Amen. The covering was different. 1 Corinthians 7 The first two were married as I've already said but let me give you some scriptures. 1 Corinthians 7 <clears throat> and verse 34 Let's talk about Anna. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman that's Anna careth for the things of the Lord that she, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. Once Mary had brought forth even the issuance of the eternal Son of God she had to go after the days of her purification and present herself and her child to the priest. The birthings that took place with Anna's testimony. The Lord hath made us ambassadors and given us the word of reconciliation. And as she went about telling all of the salvation of God, and it says, she spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And as the Lord quickened that word and made life through her testimony, she didn't have to come and purify herself for the word of God purifies you. <coughs> Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The rest of the verse, 1 Corinthians 7, 34, but she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So the Lord, wishing not to have, willing not to have suitors, lovers to claim the attention of his bride, though he allowed the first couple, the man and woman, to be married together, for the first Adam he would not allow so for the couple that he brought to proclaim the birth and the great glory of his son. They were married to God but not to one another and neither one of them cared for the things of the world. When Adam and Eve were finished. It says that God cast them out of the garden into the world. There were thorns and there were briars and there was sweat. There were tears. There was death. There was heartache. There was sin. That first couple had only the comfort and communion between themselves for they had both sinned against God. And as you read about Adam 
one of the phrases that strikes us, and I have had you read it over and over again, down through the chapter, I think it's chapter 5 of Genesis, that every time introduced, that it introduces a son of Adam, the last three words are, and he died over and over and over and over. And he died, and so and so had a son, and lived so and he died, and he died, and he died. But the verse said, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And the offspring of God, as we read the work of the Holy Spirit bringing Saul of Tarsus into life and into light, and calling him from his mother's womb to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not just a minister, but an apostle himself, receiving direct re revelation from God. As he then writes and talks about the succession of things, he calls Timothy, my son. Paul was not married. He's talking about the offspring of God, the work of the Holy Spirit, and using the Word of God and granting the gift of faith as the gospel is preached and Timothy hears it and he's brought into life. So we can say that in Christ, instead of as we read in Adam, and he died and he died and he died and he died, in Christ shall all be made alive. I am the way. I am the truth. Satan is a liar. You're going to know the truth and it will set you free. But I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So all those that come to the Father by him come in the way by the truth and in the life of Jesus Christ. So the first couple married together are thrown out into the world, briars and thorns and sweat, demons, murder, selfishness, covetousness, greed, vexing the Holy Spirit of God until God could find no true human being on the earth until Noah finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. But in Christ, we look and see a number, that a crowd that no man can number. It is unbelievable. The vastness of the family of God. God is so glorious and grace is so rich and endless and it can't be tapped out. Giving you grace did not diminish God's grace at all. Giving me grace did not diminish grace for you. I sat and watched the pie being cut. I always notice that. <laughs> Especially when I know I got to go give my blood in just a few days and have them check my sugar level. And I noticed that every time a, a V-shaped piece was cut out, it diminished the chocolate look of the pie and it brought out the aluminum pan that the pie was in. Every time the pie was lifted out, there was more aluminum, more pie plate. There is no aluminum in Christ. Some old lovesick songwriter said, All of me, why not take all of me? You got my heart, just take my lips and my, you know, hands, and you know the song. No, some of you don't, you're too young. <laughs> But if she takes all of him, there ain't going to be nothing left. But dear friend, every single one in this room that's ever taken Christ has taken all of him and nothing was diminished. Amen. 
You can drink all of him you want and it, the water level won't go down. You can eat all of him that there is and there'll still be more food on the table than anybody can get to. What well, it amazes me around here when we have bringing in the food day, it amazes me that the ladies have to have help carrying the food back out to the car and everybody has eaten everything they want and give away a lot of stuff and they still got food left over. And I think about that, that's like Jesus. He brings himself to us and say, take and eat. This is my body, glory to God. Which is broken for you. Drink ye this blood, the blood of the New Testament of my covenant. Drink ye a little sip. Drink ye all of it. But he's not diminished. God is amazing. And he has so much to show us. And this is just one little ripple on the face of the waters. This little Blue John sermon that I dare not call it a message. This little old, this little old tidbit of a seemingly instructive points. It doesn't diminish God at all. The vastness of the goodness of God is unbelievable. First couple married, kicked out into a world of thorns and briars and sweat, and, and he died and he died and he died. But the last couple that come that God has ordained the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. Simeon don't stay in the temple like Anna does. Bible said he came to the temple. He'd come to the temple that day. But Anna stayed there constantly. And 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 they they were they were not married together. They did not have the same sexual nature they were different they were different in their <coughs> relationship to the temple they were different in their relationship to God of all the people of the two choose me which one should be the prophet well it's, of course it's the man no it wasn't it was the woman God would fulfill the prophecy in, Jer in Joel 2 28-29 the, the males and females they shall prophesy I messed it up you can look back we've already read it you know what it says Peter repeated it on Pentecost this is that which the prophet Joel spoke of pour out my spirit on all flesh young women shall prophesy ladies let me tell you something the blood of Jesus is every bit as much for the female as it is for the male because in Christ there's neither bond nor free male or female Jew or Gentile Absolutely. you like that? Amen. and God would have the things of seeming opposition to be compatible in the manifestation of his glory I don't understand things of opposition, yet I use them. If I want to make me a bowl of <laughs> instant oatmeal, whew, ain't you eating high then? I got to put water on, on the fire. I got to put fire under the water. Well, there ain't nothing any more different than fire and water. You throw water on fire, you ain't got no fire no more. And you put fire under water, you ain't going to have water no more. You're going to have steam. And you better watch the kettle because if the water all evaporates, you're going to have to go buy you a new kettle and maybe a new house if you don't catch it in time. But we use it. The difference in... In, in God's world 
is for his glory. Paul talks about the different gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And not everybody has the same thing and determines it not to be. Out of every kindred and nation and people and tongue, out of every tribe, God's Christ is going to bring some by the richness of his blood. And the difference is going to blend together in love, faith, and hope being gone and fulfilled by love. And the vastness of God's glory is going to be seen in the diversity of that which he has brought to himself in Christ. Makes sense. Adam, Eve, married. Who married him? God did. Covered him in his glory. Makes sense. But in the first couple, the man didn't take the headship like he should. And in the last couple, Simeon and Anna, she was the prophetess. You ain't going to figure God out. Quit trying to make God be conformed to your little cookie cutter self. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Leave God alone. You try to make a God out of God, you'll send yourself to hell. The diversity of God. Somebody just brought it and forgive me, whoever you were. I enjoyed it. I benefited by it. I just can't remember. They said the greatest thing you can be is be yourself. In Christ. It is. Because there ain't another self like you. And your wife just said, thank God. No. <clears throat> you are that which the Lord hath made. You need to be you or else you're going to divest the world. or uh, You're going to take out of the world that which yourself ought to be doing. And that is that light that you have that should shine before me and, and glorify your Father. You need to be you in Christ. So these two were different than the first two. But these two were spiritual, married to God, were not self-seeking, were not cast out into the world, but came in from the world into the very presence of the eternal glory of Jesus Christ. As far as I can see, the pictures of, in the book of the Revelation of all the four and twenty elders and the, the beasts and all of them and the angelic host that come to worship God, this is the prerequisite of that. This is the first worshiping of God standing there visible in flesh or being held there visibly in flesh. They started it off. This is the pattern that God would have of worshiping of his son. Simon or Simeon, you be Simeon. Anna, you be Anna. There's no unisex. There's no uniclothing. You know, he ain't trying to be a woman. She ain't trying to be a man. They both just being their self. And they are brought by the Holy Spirit into the presence of the humanity of God. Whew. Ain't that something? Lord have mercy. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 For as by one man's offense, death reigned by one. And it ain't going to stop till he through death 
destroys him that had the power of death, that is the devil. For if by one man's offense death reign, that is Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. That right there sums up everything we're trying to tell you today. In Adam, death reigning. In Eve, Adam, Cain. Holy Spirit tells Abel what to do. He gravitates towards sheep. He has an internal revelation. There's no Bible, there's no preachers except the Holy Ghost and inspires Cain to bring an offering with blood. How did he get that? You don't question it because all your life you've been taught that no man can approach God without blood. You understand and know it because you've got 66 books laid in your lap telling you that, but he didn't have a single book. Where did he get it? God the Holy Ghost inspired him. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And you know what? I believe Cain's turnips and pumpkins and produce was as good as it could possibly be grown. I don't believe it was wormy. I don't believe it was shriveled up and dried. I believe it was good produce. But God said, I won't accept it. But the thing that Cain could have done was swap some produce for a lamb. But he didn't have the inclination to do so. All he wanted to do was murder the one that upstaged him because he had his mama running around telling everybody, I have gotten a man from the Lord. This is Messiah. Pumped him up. And when God blessed Abel's offering, the Bible said in Hebrews 11, God witnessed to Abel's offering. I believe fire fell from heaven on the sacrifice. You don't have to believe you don't want to. But how else could it have been known that God accepted it? I believe when God accepted Abel's offering of the blood sacrifice, Cain's heart did the same thing that Satan's and all the whole church and everybody that despised Jesus Christ have done. They're going to put everybody to death. They're going to destroy everybody. They're going to lie against them. They're going to slander them, do everything they can to destroy that witness because if you, if you, if you do truth only, you come to the light. But those that don't do truth they rather have the darkness because their deeds are evil. So, in Adam, all die. Why, by one man's offense, death reigned by one. But much more they which receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. And that's what's happening here. These two are alive and have been made alive and their testimony is is effectual. First Corinthians fifteen forty five. And so it is written, the first man, Adam was made a living soul. That's exactly what it says in Genesis 2-7. And he became a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. What does the word quickening mean? Alive. Means alive. 
So if he was a quickening spirit, he was a life-giving spirit. He not only had life, he was life. And as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to give life to whomsoever he wills. Verse 47. The first man is of the earth, and he is therefore earthy. earthy. The second man is the Lord, Lord from the Lord from heaven. So you see right here the, div the division that God made. In the first two that was there at the coming forth of the first Adam over that which was brought forth in the, these two, Simeon and Anna, at the bringing forth of the last Adam because the last Adam is the Lord from heaven. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So how are you going to receive Him? It's got to be different than the first Adam was received. This is the Lord from heaven. Nicodemus, John 3.13, I am now presently in heaven, sitting here talking to you. I'm the Son of Man which am in heaven right now. You have got to show some difference and make sure that this is not just a traditional religious ceremony and something that we carry out to titillate the senses of the flesh. There cannot be any fleshly work or feigned worship in the presence of the Lord from heaven. This has got to be genuine. This has got to be in the degree of the seraphim that covered their faces with one third of their wing power. This has got to be the casting down off of our carnal beasts that we ride upon to sustain our opinion to put these rebels in jail that worship this Jesus. There's got to be a casting down and a blinding out of the sensibilities of those religious people because you're now standing in the presence of eternal glory. And listen what he says for the first time. Who art thou? Lord. Lord. Where do you get that same place that Abel got that you had to bring blood? Where'd you get it? The Harlot Church has got us so enamored with their justification by works religion that we too often glue our salvation to the preacher or to the Bible, or to the baptism pool, or to our public confession. But if you read John 3, 8, it said you can't tell when someone is born of the Spirit. That's what it said. The wind blows wherever it wills. You might say, well, that's where it's coming from, that's where it's going, but you can't tell. So is every single one that's born of the Spirit. It's got to be you, yourself, personally convinced that this is God. This is your Lord. You're not coming in here relating to everybody out 
to your right or left. You're coming in here to re relate to he who is above all, that has the authority of us all. And we need to come in here in awe of the Holy God, not men and women married to each other who decide what fruit to eat or what fig leaves to sew together to hide from God. But we come in here having dedicated ourselves to the revelation of the Holy Ghost that we shall never see death again until we see the Lord's Christ. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never, never perish. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. Yeah. So the first two, that's just a human wedding. They sure do make a lot of money on weddings, don't they? <laughs> pay, pay thousands of dollars for a wedding, six months later they ain't speaking to one another. They got lawyers. <clears throat> but not when it's the wedding of the bride, the church, to Christ. Here's the song. The Lord is in his holy temple. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. It's different. It's different. Religion, Adam and Eve. True spiritual life, Simeon and Anna. Mm. Get ready to say amen. You ready? And the last thing. <laughs> in Luke 2. And verse 33. The earthly parents didn't get in on it. Not at that time. The earthly parents didn't understand what was going on. Luke 2, 33. And Joseph and his mother. Isn't that carefully said? It didn't say his father and his mother. It said Joseph and his mother. Marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Look at verse 50. And they understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. Maybe you can tell me the reference. I can't remember it right now. Sometimes the Lord hides things from me, but that's so you'll help me out. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. Right? The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. Adam and Eve, dumb as a stump as far as spiritual things. Didn't know from nothing. And it's pictured out by these two, Simeon and Anna, as they spoke forth and acted out by faith that which the Holy Ghost had showed each one of them individually. I could relate to what Brother Jamie brought in the lesson this morning. I could relate to what Brother Bob said, except I never did get a, a certificate for good penmanship. <clears throat> what did he say about winning a swimming race? Didn't he say something about swimming? I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't put that together. We'll talk later. Okay. But his experience, Brother Jamie's experience, I could see those people that had blatantly thrown this up in his face that put him on fire and sent him over here to tell us as a son of thunder 
how to watch out for this kind of stuff. That was good. I could relate to it. You know why? Because the same Holy Spirit's in them is in us. Yes, sir. And everybody has certain things in common. And you can relate to others' experiences in Christ because they are your experiences in Christ. And it's funny, not ha-ha funny, unique, that we can find two verses in Luke 2, verse 33 and verse 50, that speak of the natural parents not having any understanding of what was going on because the first parents didn't have a clue. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. Anybody found out that reference yet? 1 Corinthians 2.14. Say it out loud. 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. But can you see it? You say, boy, that thing with Adam was glorious. It was. But God had something higher than that. Yeah. This thing over here, as one fellow used to say, this is the real my thing. <laughs> and it sheds light back on what that wasn't. And it gives us an understanding that, hey, you Simeons, hey, you Annas, God is watching you. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying, boy, God's watching you, you better do right. That's, that's far from what I'm saying. I'm saying the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. First Chronicles. <laughs> you are a blessing to God. You're not acting out the pattern of religion. The letter of the law killeth. You're acting out the things of the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not feel full. Y'all said it right. I can't do it. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Ain't God good.